Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to my channel. This is a pick a card reading. Today we're going to be looking at what you need to release. And I'm recording this in January of 2020, but this reading is intended to be timeless, so it applies to you whenever you happen to sync up with it. Um, so go ahead and pick a pile. It's pile one, pile two, and pile three. The timestamps will be below in the description box, and please just make sure that you are selecting your pile based on your intuition and not, you know, thinking about the numbers or thinking too hard about it. So go to whichever one you were drawn to most and head to that section of the video and I'll see you there. Okay, welcome pile number one. Um, you've got the Mystic Monday Tarot deck and so this five card spread here, the bottom one is going to show what you need to release, what you need to let go of, um, sort of the central problem that the universe is trying to get you to confront, you know, looking at your shadow. And the center three cards are your past, present, and future energies. And the top one is um, kind of the general outcome where you're going based on your current trajectory, which you can shift into to align with more or out of uh, if you don't like it. Um, so let's take a look here. First at what you need to release. It's the Four of Cups. I'm going to just bring that up, see if you can get a closer look at this specific card. Here is this woman in what appears to be some a beautiful location. She's got palm trees. She's got three cups in front of her. She's presumably on a beach looking out at the ocean. But what is she fixated on? Is she looking at the beautiful beach ocean with the palm trees and her three glasses of wine or whatever she's got there? No, she's fixated on this red cup that it looks like it's in a thought bubble here, right? She's thinking of this one thing that is bothering her and she can't seem to get past it. I think we've all been in this position, right? Where we are having what should be a beautiful perfect day you know the sun is shining we're with our friends or alone if that's what we prefer you know everything is going great or should be but we just can't let something go we can't let that nagging thought we can't get it out of our minds right and even if we know it's something that we shouldn't be paying too much attention to sometimes it's really really difficult to get past that and that's what this woman is happening so since it's the cops here I feel like that this has something to do with with a relationship. Um, maybe somebody has been, you know, saying things to you that you can't let go of that are really bothering you. Or maybe the relationship itself is kind of going south um, in a way that, you know, even though you you know that this relationship needs to, if not end, at least shift. Right. But maybe you're not quite ready to let it go yet, or maybe you're not quite ready to realize that you have already moved on. You're already in your better, you know, your more ideal location, your, your paradise, really. I mean, what's better than sitting on a beach with palm trees um, and this? I don't know why I'm good. It doesn't have to be a relationship, but I'm really feeling relationship from this this cups card. I feel like if, you know, if I were sulking on a beach and not paying attention to my surroundings, the only thing that would really be distracting me to that level would be if I had some kind of relationship problem that was really weighing me down, right? I don't know what else could be. You know, I think most humans are like that, right? You know, things like money, job problems, these things. I mean, yes, they obviously can be a huge big deal and really weigh on our lives. Like, I really know how much you know, financial problems can can stress us out. But that's not really what I'm getting here. Uh, because I think if I were on a beach, I could I could let that go. I could, I could put past that. So if this resonates, if you have some kind of relationship that is dragging you down, really, right? If, if your relationship is that dark splotch in your life when your life would otherwise be idyllic, um, that's something to think about. And obviously, as you can see, the central card here is the tower. And this tower has, you know, really red. Not all tower cards are, tower cards are red like this, which again, brings me back to, to relationships. 
um, obviously with this tarot, uh, with this tower, I keep saying tarot, tower card right in the center. That is what you're going through right now. Um, really, I just, I keep thinking, I keep thinking about breakups, right? And I actually don't typically do readings about relationships, but it's really coming up right now. So, I mean, I'm sorry, guys, if you're going through, you know, what looks to be, you don't want a tower card when you're going through a breakup. Um, but I wouldn't be too, too worried about this tower card. Um, I mean, in my experience, uh, when I see the tower card, I'm usually actually kind of excited. It's like, yeah, bring it on. Like, I'm ready for this, right? Because, you know, once the dust settles, you know, if you can find your center and ride out the fall of the tower, you know, what comes after the tower? It's the star. I mean, in your particular reading, it's the king of pentacles, which is pretty awesome, right? And you know, normally we think when we are, uh, are, you know, going through breakups that it's funny that the six of pentacles is where you're coming from, um, which is really, you know, the energy of also it's orange here, which is making me think of the sacral chakra um, and the six of pentacles being kind of that reciprocal, like, you know, sharing of mutual finances. So this again brings me back to relationship. Maybe you're married or in a very serious relationship where you live together or it doesn't have to be romantic either, right? This could even be your parents. Or even if you have, you know, grown children going off to college or something like that, or even a friend that you're really entangled with, one of those friends that's maybe living on your couch or, you know, has overstayed their welcome or that's always asking you for money, stuff like that. Um, you know, maybe especially with this orange suggesting like power uh power struggles um maybe this six of pentacles energy wasn't quite uh or maybe it got to a point where it was no longer shared and reciprocal where it was more starting to drain you and that is why this this gloom in this relationship started to kind of haunt what could have been a beautiful day but uh your future um your future heading towards the King of Pentacles, which is what you'd like to see when you're going through a breakup, right? You don't want to be the person left without any, uh, without any financial resources. So if you're feeling worried that maybe you're dependent on this person, uh, in some fashion, but your, your near future, like once, once the dust settles on this tower, once it falls, um, you're going to be the king of pentacles. You know, you're going to be this guy putting on his jacket, kind of feeling like James Bond going like, yeah, I got this, you know, I'm on top of my game. So I think, imagine this king of pentacles. I'm going to bring it up here. You know, if you're going through this tower moment, remember this guy, because this is you. This is going to be you. And we even, I even get that with uh, kind of the outcome card, the crowning card here of the Four of Pentacles. This, sometimes the Four of Pentacles is reminiscent of greed and stinginess, but I don't see that with this card at all. Um, this just looks like, I mean, what, we got Four Pentacles in like a box, all stacked up. This makes it, uh, to me, reminds me of somebody who has like all their ducks in a row, who has a bit of money in the bank, right? Who has, has their shit together matches perfectly with this guy. Yeah, and isn't that, I, th I really feel like that's wonderful to be moving from this kind of lower chakra energy of orange and red, you know, your root and your sacral chakras, uh, up into this more blue and violet colors, you know, your uh, throat chakra, you know, for the blue, um, like this king here. And I actually really, really like that he is kind of green in the center. So, you know, this king, he might have all, he might have a, you know, financial stability, but it's not corrupting his heart, right? The green here in the middle, he has a, a warm heart chakra, a warm heart with a glowing green heart. So, yeah, I feel like you guys are definitely going for a breakup and it's, it's definitely a tower moment. And even if it's not a breakup, it might be one of those situations where you, you know, almost go through a breakup, but it ends up completely reworking your relationship. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're listening to this and go, well, oh, you know, uh, yeah, we, our relationship might be uh, on the rocks, but that doesn't mean, you know, that you want to break up. Well, you don't have to, you know, you can always reinvent 
your relationship and come out with the same kind of outcome, you know, being the king of pentacles with, uh, you know, all your ducks in a row. Um, that's all I'm seeing from the tarot cards. So I'm going to take a look at, we got a moonology card and a divine animals card to kind of sum up this energy. First, let's go, I think we'll do the moon card first. Hold your vision, full moon. So I really feel like you know where you're going with this, <laughs> even though you're riding the fall of this tower, you know where you're going. And this is really just a reminder to, to stay the course, you know, be true to yourself. You know what you're doing. You've got this because remember, you're going to be the king of pentacles and gorilla peace. Yes, this is so much a king of pentacles energy, this gorilla. And it's actually number one in this deck. This gorilla energy is really, I mean, obviously this is a silverback gorilla, right? So powerful, so, so powerful. But he's also, you can see down here, you know, the, the caption is a uh, piece. This card is all about, um, you know, being powerful, owning your power, knowing that you're powerful, knowing that you're this king of pentacles, but using that not to cause conflict, but to rule, rule in peace. just like this card you know looking out at these clouds this planet sitting over the horizon you know this looks like a very peaceful gorilla to me you know he could go out and uh you know wage gorilla warfare but he's not he's sitting here almost looks meditative um so yeah the gorilla magic is really just calling in calling in your strength into yourself keeping your strength for yourself and then wielding it uh when you choose to not when someone calls it from you, but when you choose to, you can wield it to create peace for yourself and for everybody around you. So really for a reading with the tarot, uh, the tower card in the middle, <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't know what's with that, uh, that slip. Every time I say tower, uh, I say tarot, um, I'll let you imagine what, what that might mean. But, uh, yeah, for a spread with the tower in the middle, um, just keep this in mind as you're going through your your tower moment because, you know, peace and strength and stability and security is coming your way. So, and that's all I'm seeing for here. Uh, thank you. And we're going to be moving on to pile two here. Hey, pile two, welcome to your reading. Uh, as you can see, we got the Rider weight deck here. And <laughs> this is, this is something going down. I'm already getting shivers just looking at this. And it's funny because pile number one had the tower card uh, in the center and you guys have death, which are, you know, if I could pick two more kind of big deal transformative cards out of the decks, I, I don't, I couldn't, right? Those, those are it, the tower and death. Um, not that the tower card, um, it has anything to do with your reading, but there's clearly a, the collective that this is tapping into. You guys have major transformations going on. Um, so this five card reading, uh, the center card is actually your current energies. So you're going through this, this trans transformation right now. And I hope nobody watching this is like afraid of the death card. Um, it doesn't mean death, you know, Literally, uh, you know, I, I've actually pulled the death card a lot for myself in the past year. And, you know, I haven't died. I haven't had any major catastrophes. I've had a lot of crazy transformations that none of uh, some of which weren't very comfortable. Right. Like I, I've moved, you know, I've uh, started this channel. I've made all kinds of shifts in my personal and uh, career life. And it wasn't always easy, but they were always, always, always for the better. Even the ones that I thought, you know, when I had those moments of despair going, no, this is a tragedy. Right. This has ruined everything. It worked out for the best. And uh, I remember I actually, uh, my grandma was really, really sick, you know, and she's, you know, in her 80s, she's my grandma. And I pulled a card, I pulled some cards trying to figure out, you know, what was going on with her. And the final outcome card for her was death. And I was like, oh my God, this is gonna be the time that this card, you know, is, really does represent death. I was like, Okay, I, I couldn't I couldn't shift myself out of that perspective because here was this really she'd been sick for years. He was this old old lady with all these problems and she pulled the death card. Um, 
but uh, <laughs> she didn't get, she didn't die. She's still alive and she's doing better than she has in like five years, even though she's just turned 83. Um, what ended up happening for her was she actually, she saw a new doctor completely by coincidence. And this doctor was like, you don't have the problem I thought you did. You really just have allergies or not the problem that other doctors, you know. And she gave her these like really intense allergy medications and her problem, like all her breathing problems completely cleared up. So all the doctors have been telling her she was dying of uh, COPD, which is like a horrible lung disease usually caused by smoking, um, which she's not a smoker. And we all thought she was going to die from it. And it turned out it was just allergies and her entire health situation completely shifted back to, you know, as healthy as I think an 83 year old woman who has, uh, you know, lots of ancillary health problems can be. So in, that, in her situation, the death card didn't mean that, you know, she was going to die, even though it seemed completely reasonable that she could die from this. It actually meant a transformation back to health. So please, please, please remember that. Um, I didn't actually mean to go into that story or tell or share that with anybody, um, but I think that's relevant here. So even if you are going through something that seems like it could be life threatening, it doesn't have to be. You know, your transformation can be back to health, back to prosperity, um, which really the rest of these cards are amazing. Like <laughs> getting uh, shivers up my neck uh, just looking at them and my back just cracked. Um, and so the card at the bottom is actually what we need to release, Ace of Cups, which in combination with the King of Cups up top, so this top card is be, being your uh, ultimate trajectory, your kind of your final outcome. If you choose to tap into this energy, you can always shift out um, if you can get, get yourself into the right um if you're doing energy work with yourself and you're meditating and you're doing, you know, whatever practices you, you prefer, you know, you can shift uh, into a different trajectory if, if you choose and if you put in the work and the intention. But um, on just your, if you don't do anything, if you just keep going as you're going, this is your current trajectory. And I don't know why you'd want to shift out of the King of Cups. That's pretty awesome. Um, so the Ace of Cups transforming into the King of Cups is telling me that you're going to have to give up something that seems really really valuable, really important to you. And it's going to be going through a bit of heartache, right? It's, it's a cups. It's something beautiful to you, something you love. And you're going to be asked, uh, to give it up in some kind of way. I don't, it doesn't necessarily have to be permanent. Um, but maybe you're going to come to some kind of decision where, you know, in order to maybe move to your ideal home, I'm going to give a, have to give up a job you really like. Um, not that I really think that this is like a career related reading because of all of these water <laughs> cups, cups, temperance, lovers. Um, but that was just, that was just, you know, an example of having to give up. Um, you know, maybe you're going through, man, I hate to bring up a breakup again because the last reading was actually about breakups as well, but all, all of this water, it seems to be about relationships. Um, you know, maybe you have to give up the relationship you're currently in, even if you, I feel like somebody is in a relationship and they're actually really good friends with their partner. Um, and that makes it hard to break up. And I've actually been there. Uh, my first boyfriend, you know, we were together for eight years and we were such good friends that it was hard to, hard to break up. Even when we kind of knew we, we should that, you know, the kind of, uh, the party was over. Right. Um, but once we did go through that, uh, you know, we, we ended up finding people, you know, relationships that were much more fulfilling and, you know, romantic and kind of in every way, right? You don't want your relationship, uh, you know, your romantic relationship to be, to be a friendship. You want to be friends with your partner, right? But you don't want it to be just a friendship. So I'm kind of getting that kind of vibe here. You might have to go through some kind of, you know, painful breakup with someone you do actually care about, but it's going to be moving you're going to find something much more in line with your highest potential with the king of cups and um on our lateral trajectory here your kind of recent past being temperance and temperance not meaning to me balance uh as people usually uh kind of sum up the card as balance or moderation 
I really feel it's more temperance as in tempering something, as in tempering, uh, you know, a sword. You know, a blacksmith would plunge the steel into water to temper the sword and it would come out. That's how you'd make it stronger. Um, the process might have been a little bit uncomfortable to the metal, you know, being so hot and getting plunged into cold water. Uh, but it would come out beautiful and strong and ready for whatever it was, you know, coming for it. Um, but with the temperance card, there was always that element of bringing the four elements together. I would say even the five elements, you know, because it's this uh, angel coming down, you know, with angels, we associate air. But she's got um, the fire the symbol for fire on her. Um, I'm sure everyone's familiar with the Rider Waite tarot, but, you know, that triangle symbolizing fire. And she's coming down to earth, but also coming down to water. So we're bringing in all of the elements and mixing them together and tempering synthesizing and tempering something and which is creating this uh this you know death transformation transformation um but where is it heading um in your kind of near future the this card being your your future uh, kind of i imagine it you know the stuff that's going to be happening to you in your kind of daily life uh whereas you know th the crowning position here is more of your overall outcome trajectory but <laughs> so in your daily life you've got the lovers coming which uh if you're feeling that this is a romantic related reading um i mean king of cups and the lovers can't really get any better than that so someone could be coming towards you know, a much, much more, like a, really a soulmate relationship. The Lovers is the soulmate card. Um, but for those of you who are listening to this and still going, it's not, I don't think this is a relationship thing for me. Um, this can also be what uh, what's coming to me more and more strongly now. After, after looking at the Temperance card, it kind of uh, rejiggered my perception here. Uh, some kind of internal, emotional, spiritual transformation where you might have to give up a, I'm, for some reason, I just thought of attachment to your feelings, some kind of mindset to go through a spiritual transformation. Cause the lover's card can also uh, represent your, your inner alchemy, your spiritual alchemy. You might be going through a spiritual awakening where you're going to be mastering your emotions. And so whether this is a, an internal shift for you or whether it's going to play out in an external soulmate, um, you would know better because this is obviously a, a general reading. And those are the same uh, sort of energies, right? Some people, they manifest their energetic transformations internally and everything happens more inside. And it might actually be hard for anybody, uh, anybody, even their close friends, to see what's going on. Other people manifest their transformations around them and in the environment and with people, um, you know, having big moves, big uh, shifts in your social circle and big uh, transformations in, you know, soulmate, your lover. So let's take a look at your oracle cards to kind of wrap this up. Uh, first, we got the new moon in Cancer. You and your loved ones are safe. Um, <laughs> again, bringing back that uh, that emphasis on relationships, and I, it's really odd to me that I would have done two relationship oriented readings in a row because that is almost never where my mind runs to in in readings, but. I mean, the cards tell me what they're telling me. Wisdom, owl. Wow, this card is really has the same colors as all of these other ones. Look at that. The yellows and the reds. And so the owl card, um, the owl being wisdom. There's also this woman there, if you can see her. This owl card talks about Wisdom, but wisdom gained from clear vision, right? Owls being creatures of the night, but with excellent, excellent night vision. So being able to see even where it is difficult to see, uh, being able to see in all directions, 
seeing, you know, everywhere, uh, being able to look far away. And this card leads me more towards the internal transformation, the, like the spiritual awakening aside of this reading. Um, and the more, the more I kind of vibe with this, maybe you're going to meet somebody, you're going to be meeting your soulmate, and that is going to be tied in with a spiritual awakening for both of you. And it would be easy to say that, you know, you had your spiritual awakening and then that gave you, uh, you know, manifested your soulmate, or you could also think, you know, oh, I met my soulmate and that triggered my, my uh, spiritual awakening, but really they're, they're like converging energies, you know, they're, they're, they're two sides of the same coin. They're happening because of, they're happening together as one thing. Does, does that make sense? I know that, <laughs> that might not be expressing myself very clearly, but it's like, uh, there's this idea and, you know, biology or neurology where, you know, your feelings correspond exactly with, you know, shifts in your neurotransmitters in your brain. And when I was younger and trying to get a grip on, you know, basic, you know, the biological basis of psychology, I was like, that doesn't make any sense, right? Like, um, I was like, which came first, you know, the, the biological change in your brain or your feeling, which one triggered the other one, but it's not like that at all. It's, they happen at the same time and they are the same thing right and that took me a lot a lot a lot a lot of time to wrap my head around that i kept feeling like no one of them has to be causing the other but that's not really the case so same thing here your spiritual awakening and your your soulmate the soul experience that you're having uh this personal alchemy that is happening both inside of you and externally with meeting your soulmate or even if this isn't a romantic relationship, it can definitely be a, still a soulmate relationship. Uh, you know, meeting your friend um, that, you know, you've kn you, as soon as you meet them, you know that you've known them from other lives or you just, you just click and you just know you rec your souls recognize, recognize each other. It's that kind of relationship. Whoever that plays out is up to you guys. But those two things are happening simultaneously and they are part of the same energy. And I think I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, so thank you. Thank you very much for tuning in and I hope this was helpful for you. We're going to be moving on to uh, Pile 3. Hey Pile 3s, welcome to your reading. Um, just taking a minute to let this kind of sit with me. There's just some really heavy energies going on. As you can see, uh, the bottom card, card here is what you need to release, which is the devil. We'll get into that in a minute. Your lateral energies your past it's the seven of wands your current energies the wheel of fortune and your future energies uh the queen of pentacles and your overall trajectory of where this uh kind of your vertical trajectory your your alignment where that's going from the devil through the transformation of the wheel of fortune is up to the hierophant so whew, uh okay uh we gotta get into this devil card uh first i want to just take a look at this uh Seven of Wands. Seven of Wands is always that uh, high ground card, right? This crow has the high ground. He's got one wand. You know, there's seven wands and some crows uh, kind of threatening him from below. So I, I really feel like you have been in a place where you, you didn't feel secure at all you've been going through the story of the wands you know with the five of wands um and kind of got to your victory with the six of wands you know when you got to the top of this hill but when you got to the top of this hill not everything was is you know maybe you thought once you got there everything was going to be okay everything was going to be good but then you found that you were still being threatened it was like how high do i have to climb before i'm safe that's that's really the energy i'm getting here that's what you've been going through um but everything's about to change because the wheel of fortune right and the wheel of fortune is of course first of all just that energy of you know what goes up must come down what goes down must come up and it's always a really encouraging card when you're in a low place because you feel yes you know now i'm gonna i'm going to the top of the ferris wheel right uh it can be not a great card to get when you're feeling like you're in a high place 
uh, cause then you know that you're going to be going down, but I don't really feel that this seven of wands is really a high place for you, right? Because it's, I mean, you are physically, you do physically have the high ground, but you're not, you're not emotionally and mentally, you weren't emotionally and mentally and spiritually in a high place. You were still in that threatened, threatened place. Um, and this is where we have to take a look at this devil card. This is the crow tarot, by the way, obviously with all the crows. This crow, this devil crow is wearing a mask with horns. There's an upside down pentacle and he has a little songbird chained. So the question for you would be, are you the devil or are you the songbird? And if you're the songbird, how did you get chained to the devil? Um, for me, the devil card always comes back to, I mean, people used to say addictions. For me, the way I see it manifesting in my life and in, you know, around, and for the people around me is that it's compulsivity, compulsive thoughts. Um, it's sort of like when your left brain goes entirely out of control and you're only ever compulsively getting attacked by your own mind, um, it, like imagine you're you're moving and you are constantly 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 worrying about everything that you haven't packed or is everything okay is that thing gonna break in in the truck is is this gonna go wrong is that gonna go wrong when you're constantly dwelling on everything that is going wrong uh in a really horrible compulsive energetic way it's almost like there's this like pulsing uh nagging worry that you cannot break free of. Um, I'm actually kind of talking kind of slow. I really feel bogged down down by this. Um, and guys, just, just so you know, this is also Capricorn energy. Um, and I mean, I'm, I'm talking about this and trust me, it's because I understand. I understand this card. Um, I have a Capricorn stellium. I have Sun, uh, Uranus, Saturn. Uh, Neptune and Mercury in, in that order, all in Capricorn. And uh, my son is at zero degrees Capricorn and they're all in there. Um, and it's obviously Capricorn season right now. If you're watching this, uh, you know, in January, 2020, um, I understand, <laughs> I understand this, this compulsive Capricorn devil energy uh, entirely, um, which is maybe why it's kind of resonating so deeply with me right now. I'm feeling kind of bogged, bogged down by it. But the great thing is that you don't need to stay in this energy forever. And if you remember, you know, the devil, well, the devil is Lucifer. Who is Lucifer? He's, he's an archangel, right? He wasn't the devil always, and he won't be the devil forever. Um, you know, actually, like if, you, if you're like really, really deep into modern esoterica <laughs> there, you know, legend has it that Lucifer, um, has has already redeemed himself you know that he he is no longer the devil he has that he almost that on a cosmic level he had to fall and you know become the devil and in order to redeem himself and that 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 arc you know energetically once somebody goes through that arc or any kind of arc right any kind of movement it's like making uh, a new neural pathway in the cosmic brain just like in your brain when you do something over and over again or even just once it, it's creating a new new pathway. And then the more times you do that, even if it's just writing, learning to print, right? When you're in kindergarten, you're creating neural neural pathways. And then it, the more often you do it, the easier and easier it becomes. So if you kind of think of the cosmos as a great neural net, um, when somebody, <laughs> when an archangel falls and becomes like sa Satan, right? And then comes back up and redeems himself, that is creating a pathway for essentially anybody else to go through a fall. And I don't, I don't think humans can, can have a fall as extreme as, you know, going from archangel to devil to back to archangel. Um, our, our falls are, you know, they're, they're smaller. <laughs> they're short, uh, short. We have a shorter way to fall. And we also uh, maybe can't, I don't want to say we can't rise as far, but I think the vast majority of us uh, won't be falling or rising as far as Lucifer in this lifetime, let's put it that way, you know, 
the our future trajectories uh, and future lifetimes as the cosmos matures. Who knows? But for now, <laughs> we'll go with we have a smaller way to fall. Um, okay, sorry, ga gathering my thoughts, and I found myself staring at the wheel of fortune here. And the wheel of fortune is you don't have to be you don't have to be riding this. Remember, you you have a choice. You can choose to be the center of the wheel. What happens when you're at the center of the wheel? You're not having those huge ups and downs, right? You're not riding the Ferris wheel. You're in a centered space. And that's what, you know, people always talk about, you know, be centered, be aligned, right? Find your center. Um, right at the middle there. If you can sit there, then even as, even, as, even as the wheel turns, you're not moving. You are maintaining your equanimity. That is the place you want to be. And I feel like you really will be finding your center because where are you going from this place of uh, insecurity and threat, this energy of the devil um, in your daily life, you know, as you're walking down the street type deal, our lateral movement here is to the queen of pentacles. So <laughs> you're going to be coming into a place of stability, um, you know, in everything material, financial, um, your living situation will sort itself out if that's up in the air, uh, or it will improve, um, even if you're already okay. Um, you know, you're just not going to be having any more problems. I feel even at, at work, you might even be getting a position of authority, not necessarily, you know, not necessarily being promoted or not necessarily having, uh, power over others, but definitely, uh, an influence. You might be recognized for that which you do on a more tangible level than you're used to. Um, even more interesting than that is that <laughs> vertically here we have going like, to, I don't know, to have three major arcanas all stacked up like this going from the devil through the transformative uh, action and of the wheel while you're staying centered, you end up with the higher vent, which speaks to me of, I mean, we have three crows here, you know, which speaks to me of, you know, uh, holy trinities in, in like all, you know, traditions, right? But the higher vent always speaks to me of that alignment. You know, if, if the, the wheel card is finding your center, the higher, higher vent is finding your alignment with with yourself, you know, a lot, getting all levels of alignment here. This is getting your, your energy centers and your body aligned, however you like to work with those, aligning with your higher self, aligning your subconscious with your ego, with your super conscious, um, aligning with your, your guides, aligning with your soul family, your soul group. Um, you know, however this plays out in your personal beliefs and practices um thinking think of however whatever alignment means to you whatever connecting with connecting through everything uh, as i said that i just saw um i saw myself connecting you know with the center of the earth connecting with you know the consciousness of the planet and connecting all the way up beam of light through my body up to the center of the galaxy. <laughs> like that's the level of alignment I'm talking about. Um, if you're into energy work, you'll uh, immediately have recognized, you know, that is uh, that's the way you get aligned when you're sitting down to um, receive energy work. A lot of times you're guided through that, or if you're just working it on yourself, you know, and stepping into that alignment, putting yourself as a a circuit between the center of the earth, you know, and the earth's consciousness, all the way up through the stars and into the center of the galaxy. And I mean, beyond, you know, if you want to expand it past that all the way to source, if you feel like it. Um, so feel free to interpret this because uh, it is a general reading and I don't know who I'm reading for. Interpret this through your own spiritual and religious even uh, practices, however you would prefer. But <laughs> I mean, I would take this as a token of nothing but good news. Moving on from your, your threat your your compuls your compulsions, your feelings of threat and insecurity into just physical abundance and cosmic alignment. I mean, I don't know how much more we can ask for. So just to wrap this up, um, let's take a look at the oracle cards here. First, 
uh, the moon card. What do you need to release? Well, for that was a pretty serendipitous since this is a reading of what you need to release. And <laughs> funny, I just realized that I went on such a tangent about all of these cards that I didn't actually address the question. I mean, I think, it, I guess I felt it was obvious, but the thing you need to release is clearly, you know, these devil energies, you know, those compulsions. And take the journey of, you know, Capricorn all the way from the depths of the ocean, all the way to the peak of the mountain. You know, take the journey of Lucifer all the way from, you know, being the seemingly irredeemable devil all the way up to being reclaiming your status as the archangel and <laughs> uh, getting shivers as I'm saying this all the way up my spine. So climb your mountain, make your ascent. Connect with Saturn um, if you feel like it. People often talk about Saturn as being like the great malefic, um, but clearly myself with all of this Capricorn energy. Um, and I actually recently went through my Saturn return. It ended about five months ago. <laughs> um, and I really felt it end. I felt it end on the full moon in Pisces. And that was obviously one of the, <laughs> the most challenging things I ever went through. It was like, it went on for, you know, like three years. Um, coming out the other side of the Saturn return, if anybody's watching this going through a Saturn return, just hang in there. Uh, I mean, that's all you can really tell anybody, right? Hang in there. Find your center. Stay at the middle of the wheel. You know, if you feel like it, um, there's also the uh, traditional energy with the Hierophant. If you feel like getting, it would be helpful to you or interesting to you or whatever, um, to adopt more formal and structured spiritual, spiritual practices. That doesn't need to be, you know, getting religious or getting into any kind of formal religion, but even just meditating 10 minutes a day, every day, if you don't, you know, setting up specific schedules for you or reading, you know, spiritual books that might, that interest you, you know, maybe you want to adopt more, more, uh, structured practices. Cause there is that little bit of energy of structure with the higher event. And there's obviously an energy of structure and, uh, self-discipline, self-responsibility, uh, you know, lifting yourself up by your bootstraps energy with Saturn. Um, I'm talking about Saturn because of devil and Lucifer and Capricorn. And then you get to Saturn, right? It's all, all bundled up together. And, uh, Kali, uh, just came up as well. Um, if you're looking for a more feminine aspect to this, cause these are actually, uh, except for the queen of pentacles, these are pretty fairly masculine cards. Um, Maybe Kali is the queen of pentacles. I just, I just felt a connection here. So yeah. And I've actually heard, heard more and more people recently making a connection from between uh, Kali and Saturn because she's that same kind of energy. Like when you're aligned, um, you know, Kali is the loving, uh, the loving mother, right? But if you're not aligned, she's going to come and straighten you the fuck up, get into alignment. Um, yeah, uh, I better stop there before I keep rambling. We have one more Oracle card. The Raven News. Okay, so this uh, Raven card talks about receiving messages, but specifically through through the veil. You know, ravens can travel through to other worlds and bring the messages back. And I really like that the raven card popped up uh, with this deck because this is the crow deck. Obviously, crows and ra ravens being really closely connected. And we were just talking about, you know, Lucifer and Kali and, you know, aligning with your, your higher self. So if you're interested, if you're open to it, you know, uh, ask you can ask the universe to receive more, more messages from, from your higher self, from your guides. And if you've never connected with, uh, anything, uh, like that before, um, you just have to be open to it and ask for it. And if you don't meditate, um, if you're interested in that, that would definitely be something to, to start picking up, 
um, that will, because finding that place of stillness, that place of center, um, that is how you will receive the messages from this raven and from all of these crows. And that will also help you get aligned. And I think that is the end of your reading. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I would really appreciate it if this resonated with you, if you would leave me a comment. Um, this is a brand new channel. This is a brand new project for me. I'm just getting started. Um, so I'd really like to hear from anybody who actually watched this through to the end. Um, and I will be doing a kind of tarotscope-style uh, um, readings for every sign for Aquarius season um, on January 20th. Um, I would love it if you stuck around for that. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.